Hello everyone. This video is about the mechanisms which are responsible for the formation of ATP. So ATP is formed by two different mechanisms. One is substrate level phosphorylation and the other one is oxidative phosphorylation. So substrate level phosphorylation is the minor source of ATP whereas oxidative phosphorylation is the major source of ATP or it is a main source which supplies the ATPs. Now coming to substrate level phosphorylation. So it can be defined as formation of ATP at the level of substrate without the help of electron transport chain. The meaning of this statement is so generally these substrates which are participating in the substrate level phosphorylation are high energy compounds. So high energy compounds means the compounds which release energy more than 7.3 kilocalories are called as the high energy compounds. So these substrates which are high energy compounds during the reaction they release energy and this energy which is released during this reaction is transferred directly to the nucleoside diphosphate to form nucleoside triphosphate. So that means so whatever energy released is used for joining ADP and inorganic phosphate to form ATP. In some reactions, high energy phosphate is transferred to ADP to form ATP. Let us see some examples to understand what is actually a substrate level phosphorylation. So in this example you can see 13 bisphosphoglycerate is converted into 3 phosphoglycerate. So during this conversion, the high energy phosphate of 13 bisphosphoglycerate is transferred to ADP so that ADP is converted into ATP. So this is how ATP is formed at the level of substrate by the transferring a high energy phosphate from the high energy compound. And here ATP is synthesized without the help of electron transport chain. So that means so generally the major mechanism of ATP formation is using the electron transport chain. So that involves whatever energy that is present in the glucose, fatty acids and amino acids during oxidation it is conserved in the form of NADH. So that NADH and FADH2 they carry the electrons to the electron transport chain where the energy of the electrons is used for the synthesis of ATP. So this is a complex mechanism. So without the participation of this complex mechanism, ATP is directly formed at the level of substrate only. So in this reaction, phosphoenol pyruvate is converted into pyruvate. Again here, the high energy phosphate is transferred to ADP to form ATP. These two reactions that is 13 bisphosphoglycerate reaction and phosphoenol pyruvate reaction, these two reactions they take place in the glycolysis. Come next example, succinyl CoA is converted into succinate. The succinyl CoA is a high energy compound. So during the conversion to succinate, whatever energy released, that energy is used to join GDP and inorganic phosphate so that it forms the GTP. So here not only ATP, GTP is also formed by the substrate level phosphorylation. So this GTP may be used for the conversion of ADP into ATP. And this particular reaction takes place in the TCA cycle. Now coming to the most important example, conversion of creatine phosphate to creatine. So this creatine phosphate is a high energy compound that is present in the muscle. Now when a person is doing exercise, muscle requires energy. So that energy is supplied by hydrolysis of ATP. So whenever he continues the exercise, ATP is utilized rapidly so that it leads to decreased levels of ATP in the muscle and increased levels of ADP because ATP is converted into ADP. Now whenever the levels of ADP are increased, so it indicates low energy state. Now creatine phosphate which is present in the muscle, it can transfer the phosphate to ADP so that ADP is converted into ATP. So this is about the substrate level phosphorylation which is the minor source of ATP and details of the major source of ATP that is oxidative phosphorylation 
it will be discussed in another separate video so thank you for watching please subscribe like it and share it